there's a lot of discussion uh, for some reason there's a lot of discussion about instrumental music in the Church of Christ today it's a lot of arguments you can smile at me I just need somebody smiling <laughs> some people looking nervous like yeah uh, <laughs> uh, there's, there's, and, and there's there's a lot of people who've been hurt by it there's a, there's a lot of families that have split over it People who used to worship it, but they don't worship there anymore because of the things have been said on a personal level all about this particular subject. Um, so if you've been in North Colony any amount of time, you would know that I don't really talk about instrumental music. I don't really preach on it. Um, and so on tonight, not only will we talk about it, uh, but hopefully and prayerfully at the end, I'll tell you why I don't spend a lot of time on instrumental music. So just think about if you go to a club, there's what? There's music. You go to concerts, there's music. You got family gatherings and you're, you go to parties and that's what you did. Especially if you did that before you got serious about your faith. There's a lot of stuff that you used to you participate in. So I know people that are very adamant about no instrumental music in the Lord's house, but they free everywhere else and then they getting down and then I don't know how to, I just, they, 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 you know, you get down and dance. I don't know why you get down and, I don't know why people getting down and dance. You can stand up and dance. I don't know. Some, some people struggle with nostalgia. You have a flashback, but you're a Christian now, so you're trying to find out how to have, but you don't know how to have Christian fun. You're a Christian now, you know, you, so you both, so they told you to stop everything. You're like, ah, everything, but so how can we steal, but the fun that you were exposed to were of the world. Do not approach this scripture with the perspective of preference. Because I can find a thousand people who say I worship with instruments and it doesn't distract me at all. So I can never I can never get in a Bible conversation with somebody about on the subject of distractions because distractions are subjective. You know, I can watch television and eat and 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 do homework at the same time. Some of you, you need everything cut off. You need your space clean. Uh, you need your pencil sharpened and your pen and you got your laptop and you got your, and you need everything set up and then you go. There's some of you, you all in the bed with one leg out eating donut and you just and getting an A. That's yes, how you get your A. So notice a lot of things are subjective. So if we're going to have a Bible discussion, you cannot put your preference over anyone else. They were excited about what God had did for his people. Miriam grabbed the timbrel, told the sisters, come on, let them out, and with the timbrel, just started dancing and praising God. The context of this scripture is that you have Hebrew slaves who have spent their whole life in slavery. They don't know God. You know why I know they don't know God? Because just a few chapters later, thousands of them die in the wilderness because they do idol worship. So here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to take examples from this group. Because this whole group that went out and dancing and, 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 and marrying them leader, they all died. God got frustrated because they did not know how to worship him. Be careful who you take your examples from. Right? Uh, but this is, this is your first, this is one of your first scriptures that you ever read of instruments and praise dancing. But here's also taking perspective. There is, there is no temple at this time. The law has not even fully been installed. They know nothing really of the laws of God. They spent all of their lives worshiping idols in an Egyptian country, in an African country, worshiping idols, worshiping the way non-believers or barbarians worship. So their dances look like African dances because where they've been slaves in Africa.
I have to say Africa because some people don't know that Egypt is in Africa. So <laughs> some, people didn't, some people didn't realize that. <laughs> is instruments in the Bible? I want to say yes. Instruments is in the Bible. So if you take the time to start studying like we're doing, if, if, we, if we had enough time, to just, let's just go through the scriptures. You're going to find instruments in the Bible. You're going to find dancing. You're going to find all of these things. There's nothing sinful about instruments. I want to make that very clear. There's nothing sinful about dancing. Some type. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> some of them. All, all dancing is not sin. Some of it is. Some of it is outlawed in heaven and earth. Uh, <laughs> but but not all. But but some. But not all dancing is sin. So so I don't want to demonize instruments. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with a flute. It wasn't made by uh, Satan, <laughs> right? Uh, but. What I'm, the reason why I'm going to the scripture is because you don't take examples of how to operate in a Christian church from newly freed slaves who don't know God. And the reason why they're doing what they're doing is that because they're just celebrating on a, on a natural day. They know nothing about the Lord's day. They, they, that, that is far from their mind. They're just happy that God stepped in and protected them. So you can imagine this is on, like on a Thursday, they got excited, a lot of sisters got up, lined up, and just started dancing, shouting, and praising God. And Miriam answered them, and she said, sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphantly, gr gloriously, uh, the horse and his rider he hath thrown into the what? Now, if your enemy on your back, and the Lord sweep in and throw them in the sea, I'll be dancing too. Didn't God do it? be pointing and singing too, right? So they know nothing about the Mosaic law. They know nothing about worship. They know nothing about Jehovah and honoring God. The, matter of fact, their first experience with, with the real power of God, they're at the Red Sea. Wow, this is God? So they start dancing. But their dancing and their joy and all is a reflective of the captivity they just freed from. If you saw them right now, you would probably feel uncomfortable because you're like, mm, these don't look like, because we have this perception in this mind that they, were, they always knew God. They didn't always know God. Music does do something to the what? To the spirit, to the, to the body. Matter of fact, music has been, been found to, it can calm you down. That's why when you go to uh, 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 go shopping, they got music playing in the store so you can calm you down so you can pay and swipe with no issues and you feel <laughs> your favorite song is playing while you're just swiping away and you're going, uh, music is in all of the commercials. Music is, a, matter of fact, music and sports have been married together for a long time because they understand, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and, and everybody shout at the game because the music and the drum and everybody, uh, 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 what's that? We are the chant. And, and, and that song has nothing to do with sports, but they've been married together to the point where it's almost at every game uh, if you're a winner. Uh, and so in order for instruments to be played, somebody has to be trained. Everything we do in worship service, you have to participate. We say everybody pray, everybody sing. If you're a child of God, everybody take communion. Everybody give. Everybody open your Bible. But if we add in instruments, that's the part that everybody can't do. Now just think about all the acts of worship. All the acts of worship, regardless of your education, regardless of your background, your color, your gender, everybody can participate. But if you add the element of instruments, that's the part where everybody can't participate. You just have to sit back and enjoy it. See, David uh, begins to play the harp. Something like this, I don't know how to play. But he begins to play the harp. I'm thinking that's romantic, you know. <laughs> two hands, you know, you get to two hands. Uh, and so he's playing. Uh, and so he's skillful. Matter of fact, he's not even king of Israel yet, but his gift, notice it, it's a gift. His gift and his talent, two different things, his gift and his talent is known throughout the land. The boy can play. Right now, he happens to be the king of Israel. Saul ends up dying, killing himself. 
he becomes the king of Israel. And as the king of Israel, he institutes something that God does not command him to do, but, but what God allows him to do. This was a personal project from David and his own desire. Hey, I did, he's command because you're the king. He's commanding them. I want y'all to do this. Right. I can model his desire to praise the Lord. What I cannot model is his instructions. I follow Christ. I don't follow David. Those are his instructions. And that's fine for that time and for those people. But I'm a Christian. I don't follow David. I follow Christ. So I need to know what Christ says about it, even though you're showing me what David said. Right? Uh, I love Miriam, Moses' sister. Love her, all in the family. But I don't follow Miriam. As a Christian, I follow, I follow Christ. Right? Burnt off in the new moons and on the set feast days by number according to the order commanded unto them continually before the, it was a commandment he, he set in place and he mixed instruments with the things that God desired. David, Jesus didn't take instructions from David. So David, if that's what you want, but I'm building my, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And Jesus didn't build his church according to the instructions of David. So anybody who says, but they had instruments in the Old Testament, yeah, they did. But when Jesus built something, he didn't follow that blueprint. He had his own blueprint from heaven, right? There's nothing that you can do in worship that can substitute me. So if I don't show up, I don't tell Brother Trevor, hey, Brother Trevor, I ain't gonna be able to make it today. Can you represent me? Uh, and I'm feeling like I wanna give this much an offering, uh, so if you can do that for me. Uh, I like to sing with my head up, so if you can do that for me. You can't, nobody can come in here with a sign and say, I'm, represent, I'm representing uh, Sister Red today. No, Sister Red, she just missed it. Because I can't get mine and yours at the same time. Right? Uh, so, uh, we, whenever you have praise teams, I don't care how beautiful they sound, they can't sing for me. I got to sing. So, you go to a lot of churches and, and they got professional singers, that's wonderful. But you're supposed to sing. The whole church stops singing because the brother on the drums and he's just going at it and everybody like, they're clapping for the gift. But we're here for the Savior. Right? So we can listen to that tomorrow. And we can give you your props for your skill t tomorrow. But today is about the the Lord and only a small group of people even have the gift to even do it and those who will do it we would just have to sit back and then we're going to sit there and judge the whether or not you can do it real well I don't like this guitar player where do we get him from you know he needs to go back to school this is and you can't participate praise ye the Lord praise God in his what that's not just script those are instructions I'm telling you where you need to go in his sanctuary. Has the church uh, been built at this time? So don't get in a church discussion with Psalms 150. Nobody, matter of fact, as he's writing these instructions, he has no idea what the church even is. What is that? The sanctuary is a temple, an open temple, where it was filled with smoke and dead animals. You won't even recognize it if you went into the temple. You're like, what's all the blood on the floor? What's, what's, it smell like, it smell like doves and sheep. What's, what's in here? You would bring the animal. People, if, if, if you were to follow people to go into the sanctuary, they looking at you strange. Hey, where your animal at, man? You didn't see him this week? Y'all good? You good? You know, I got an extra, I got an extra lamb for you if you, you trying to get right with God. Anybody trying to get right with God tonight? I got an extra lamb, you know, selling it five dollars. You want it? Right? You wouldn't even recognize the worship. You wouldn't even recognize the worship then. So when we're trying to read scripture from the Old Testament and compare it to a spiritual place, because the church has not been made by hands. It's a spiritual place. You can't take something physical because everything that David is talking about is physical. 
even for the point where he, he takes credit. These are my instruments. Right? So he says, uh, praise God in the sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, and praise him with the psaltery and the harp, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the string instruments and organs. These instructions. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the, praise ye the Lord. Somebody will go to Psalms 150 and say, see, the Bible says, but you got to understand, He's talking about his passions. And that's another religion. What religion are you in? You're in Christianity. I don't point to another religion and get instructions for what I do in Christianity. You compare Christianity to Christianity. You don't compare Judaism to Christianity. It's two different religions. In your Bible, there are 66 books. Half the Bible, 39 books, but in your Bible, the little white paper that separate, half your Bible, your Bible is made up of two different religions. And at the very beginning of the Bible, it's no religion. Uh, uh, Noah, what did Noah know about the Ten Commandments? What is that? Right? So when they're singing and dancing in a no religion, Miriam, when she was dancing, she knew nothing about no law. She was just beginning her relationship with God. She's, she was fresh. You know more about God now than when she did when she was dancing. So why would I take instructions in Christianity from a woman who didn't even really know God? Right? I hear some people say uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 is not a worship scripture. That's not true. It is a worship scripture. It's not only a worship scripture, but it's also a scripture that pertains to your daily life. So uh, Ephesians is a letter. Ephesians is a letter. The only way at this time that the church was going to hear this scripture is that the church would gather together and they would read the letter in front of the whole church. So this scripture is being read in a church setting. It's, it's being read in a church setting. With that being said, speaking to your what? Now, he's talking to Christians. He ain't talking to unbelievers. So at what point do Christians speak to themselves? Speaking to yourselves, how do we speak to ourselves? Hymns and what? Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We are restricted to the type of music that can be played here. That can be sung here. That can be sang here. We're restricted. So, uh, I know Ed Sharon got a beautiful, he got a beautiful song that's out. Somebody will say, stop, Brother Williams. We're restricted to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. If it's not a psalm, hymn, it's, I don't care how beautiful the arrangement or the song, and even if we do, even if it's a cappella music, you're not allowed to sing just any song in his house. Because it has to be a psalm, hymn, or, or a spiritual song. So you know what? When it's your house, you can make the, and in the rules of his house, he said, listen, all songs, Matter of fact, it's one of the rules I have for my house. All songs have to be sung about me. <laughs> when it's your house, you say, hey, listen, anytime you open your mouth and you're going to sing, it better be about, it better be about me. <laughs> right? That's God. I'm just going to tell you in the scriptures. Right? Somebody came in our fellowship and they said, listen, we need to stop singing. I'm going to take them to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19 and says, no, we have scripture to support singing. Somebody said, what about instrumental music? Now that's another uh, subject and I wouldn't use a singing scripture to refute another subject. You don't use a singing scripture to correct somebody about communion. You go, to, to, you go to a what? You go to a communion scripture. And then now let's talk about communion. Well, somebody says, Brother Williams, what scriptures do we use for instrumental music? So here's why I don't preach about it. Because there's no scripture. It's impossible to have a Bible study about instrumental music in the Church of Christ 
because when Jesus built the church, he didn't think it was necessary enough to even bring up the subject. It's the shortest Bible study ever. So, uh, I use this example. Is it okay to play basketball in worship? You know what you would tell me? It's a non-subject. Brother Williams, you got off subject. And I said, no, I, not, no, I did it. Because talking about basketball in worship is the equivalent of talking about instruments in worship. Scripture doesn't talk about either one of them. So why are we having a dumb conversation? Matter of fact, if we were real students of the word of God, if we opened up the scriptures and we studied it, we would never come to this subject. I almost want to apologize to you tonight that we're discussing something that the scriptures never talk about. So I don't want to take a whole lot of time. I don't want to take God studying time to discuss something that God never talked about in pertaining to his church in this religion. Now, if you want to talk about Judaism and if you're in Judaism, then we can have an instrumental music conversation. Matter of fact, the Jews should be having this conversation. Not Christians. Christians should not be having a is instrumental music okay in the Lord's house conversation because you can never study it. There are no scriptures about it and it has nothing to do with what you prefer. You can't, there's nothing to go through. People who are pushing it in the Lord's house, even if they think they're right, even if they think they're right, they would still have to answer to God because you're splitting the church over a non-issue. This is a non-factor. That's like splitting the church uh, because uh, we want to uh, play spades during communion. You would, you would be like, Brother Williams, why are you causing people to stumble? over a stupid the conversation of instrumental music and worship is a stupid conversation and anybody who spends any preaching time and spends uh, all their time fussing about it and arguing is a waste of time so you know what we're going to do after this I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we got to get back to saving souls so what I need to be talking about is the gospel I need to be talking about the Holy Spirit I need to be talking about holy living we need to be talking about the commandments and teachings we, we actually need to be talking about what Jesus actually said versus subjects he never talked about. So if Jesus never talked about it, why would we spend a whole gospel meeting? Why would we spend a whole conference or lectureship on a subject that's a non-factor? I've never seen anybody run down and jump and get baptized because the bass player was killing it. <laughs> the guitarist was going at it and somebody said nah, I want to be saved I've never seen that before I've never seen that before people don't get saved by instruments so you know what I think this is this is the best the devil got us arguing over something that doesn't even exist in the script. Ain't that good? <laughs> the Bible says he's cunning. The devil got up. The devil got people split in churches. And it's an, and it's an indictment on God. He said, look at your people. I didn't even have to use scripture to get them to fight. They're fighting on something, they're fighting over something they can't even read. Do you know if you start this conversation, you can never end it?